Welcome back to another Pixel Maker tutorial. Today is a Patreon request from Midnight Darkness. We wanted to see how to do a respawn after you fall in different areas. So with that said, let's get started. So here's the project sample. It is available down below. And so basically what it is, is we have different sections where the player can fall off, but we want him to respawn at the appropriate ledge that he was on. And then this object right here is just the fall object. If we go right here, the fall hit, and I just stretched it out really long basically has an attack area and that's about it and it just stays put all right so you see that it covers this fall it covers this fall and all this stuff so how exactly are we going to get it to where the player knows where to go and how we do that is i just have a tab or a layer called area detection and if we turn the c all off you can see that i have an area detection right here right here right here right here basically at every ledge point that i would like so you can see that this is where I would want the player to respond is on this ledge right here. Now you see, I go all the way up because there's a chance that you could jump or fall from very high. And you basically just want to cover all the cases of that. But what this tile is, if we go here and we right click this tile, if you right click it, it takes you to the tile over here that you're using. And then if we click on edit, we can see that I have it area detection and that it's when it's overlapping. All right, so it's just an area detection, a simple area detection, and they're just, it's just the same area detection. So then when you go to objects here, on the player, I have a connected object called edge position saver, and it's just running this child here. And basically what happens is, is it's waiting for the player to hit 81. When it hits the 81, which it's detecting for the player area detection one. And again, if no one's, if you're not familiar with, the area detection is determined by the center. So this red square, not where the lines intersect, but the red square. You can move the red square by moving the center right here. You can see it move like that. And then let me move it back here. All right, so that's the center. That's what is detecting the area detection. So once it hits one, it then goes to save where it needs to respawn. So it saves the X and then it saves the Y. Now, the Y is only important for a certain reason. The X is super important, but you can see what, what we do is we have a player respawn X variable that we've created and we attach or we assign the player X coordinate when it hits the one. And then we do the same thing with the Y, the, the respawn Y variable with the Y coordinate position. And then on the exit link, it's just, it changes unconditionally. So it's constantly looping. So as soon as you hit one of those things, as long as you're inside it, it's going to be updating the X and, and the Y. So as long as you're inside this blue, because you can still move pixel to pixel, and it's going to be updating that whole time that you're in this blue area. All right. So then the fall hit, this is just, again, to have an air, uh, attack detection. And then we have the fall respawn common action here. And so you can see that, it's needing to first know that you haven't been hit already. This is a lock, basically. So it, you just create a switch called hit, and it has to be off in order to be hit again, right? And then the attack detection for a fall hit group, I named it the fall hit, um, or this one was for, for a specific object, actually, because it could be that easy. And then it needs to be an and. And then, of course, I give no conditions. I lock out the common action, basically, and then I do a go to which is where I change hit on, that way it doesn't re-enter this, and then I go to the fall respawn logic. And the reason why I wanted that is because I wanted different branches, and you can't do that with a common action. So whenever you're gonna need different branches to from uh, action, then you want to do a go-to like this. And then I usually just put them right under each other so they stay really nice and organized, all right? So then the first one is, is if your HP is zero, obviously you're dead and you go to dead. Otherwise, you, this is a invisible. Now it's not invisible. It is a animation here that has a wall detection still. All right. But it's just fully transparent like that. And the reason why is so that the player can fall real quick. And when it touches the floor, that's when it knows that it's at this point it's supposed to be because we don't know the exact why that the tile is on. So what we do is we assign the x coordinate to be that respawn x and then the y coordinate to be the respawn y 
and then we turn invincibility off because it might be on and you want to restart it. I don't know if this is necessary. It might have been during my testing, but anyway, just we'll leave that there. But what happens is, is then, so the player, because you're ignoring movement and stuff, so the player, let's just say that you jumped and then you fell. The player is going to turn transparent. It's going to instantly warp to right here, and then it's going to start to fall. And so the next thing that we need to do is that when this thing hits the floor, which is, it has wall detection, so we can do that. So when it hits the floor, then it turns into weight. We still lock it out of movement. We turn the hit off, meaning that it can get hit again. And then we turn invincibility on. And then that gives it that little invincibility, unconditional change into waiting. So that gives it that little bit invincibility after you fall kind of a thing. And maybe the reason why is because I didn't, I put it off right here is because I didn't want it to start the invincibility timer during the fall. Like I didn't want to include that time, maybe. And since I take away the collision, it's not like I would be getting hit again. So that's probably why I put that right there. But yeah, so with this kind of a system, you can see exactly how it saves. It saves as soon as the player is going over this blue thing. And then when it falls, it then spawns up, it falls. And as soon as it hits the ground, it turns back into your normal logic. So yeah, hopefully this video was helpful. If you have any questions, comments below, Steam Forms Discord, we'll get you figured out. That said, I'll see you at the next video.